Hi everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bee Crochet and I want to welcome you to video number three, square number three of Bonnie's Mystery Crochet Along. This week we're going to do another delightful square. I hope you like it. If you are coming to this video for the very first time and haven't seen the intro or the other two videos, no problem. You can start right here. These videos are not necessarily sequential, so you don't have to go in a particular order. You can always catch up later on the other two squares, but do take some time to look at the introductory videos. So I, in that video, I explain everything that we will be doing so you have an idea of what's going on. Well, let's go ahead and get to square number three. For square number three, I'm going to be using paint box yarn, Simply Erin. This is a number four worsted weight yarn, 100% acrylic. I'm going to be using five balls of this, and this is color number 240 of this uh, particular brand. Um, each of these balls has approximately 200 and yard, 201 yards in it. If you're not using this brand, no problem whatsoever. I hope you can find the yarn that you like the best in your area. You will need approximately a thousand yards. And in that estimate, there's a little bit of overage just to make sure that you have enough. And I'm also recommending that you have a size I or nine or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook or whatever hook that you need to match the yarn that you are using to get the drape and the results that you like best. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. I'm also recommending that you have some removable stitch markers so that you can mark the perimeter when we get to working the perimeter round. Now, if you don't have any fancy stitch markers like this, a simple piece of contrasting yarn will also do the trick. Again, this is an option. Okay, to begin, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we are going to chain a foundation chain of 53 chains. Okay, now for row one, starting in the fourth chain from hook, so one, two, three, four, we're going to work a double crochet. And I'm gonna work a double crochet in each of the remaining chains all the way across the row. I am working on just one side of the V. If you see the chain as a V, just on one side. And the reason for that is we are going to be working a perimeter round at the end, which will cover up the remaining part of the chain. I just think this makes it much easier to work instead of working in the back bump. So go ahead and work those double crochets all the way across. At the end of this row, you should have 50 double crochets plus the turning chain. I am not including the turning chain or the chain three here in that 50 stitch count. Now to begin row two, and this is probably the most important for setting up what we're going to be working for this square. We're going to chain three, skip the first stitch, and in the next stitch we're going to work a single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and this three stitch combination is referred to as the wattle stitch, W-A-T-T-L-E stitch. We're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to do that again. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And again, skip two stitches, one, two, for that wattle stitch to lay nicely upon those stitches. Okay, now we're going to skip two more stitches, one, two. So that is a total of four stitches after working that last stitch. And we're going to begin the foundation for the small honeycomb by working a treble crochet in each of the next two stitches. Working behind these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches nearest this. So this stitch and this stitch, which is the third and the fourth stitches that we skipped. We're gonna come in behind them to this large hole opening and then locating that first stitch to crochet that post stitch around. And the way I do that is through the nerve endings in my uh, finger and thumb. And let's do that again. So the next stitch we're going to crochet around is right here. I'm gonna come back into the hole, 
and I've located it again with my thumb and finger and we crochet that front post treble just like that. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're gonna front post treble over the next two stitches, that's one, and two. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped, starting with the one that's furthest away from our hook. Then the next one, which is right here. I'm going to pause a second and show you what this should form. It forms a large, a large V down and then up. And after we do that, we're going to go into the next stitch. Now make sure that you don't work in this stitch. It's very easy to double dip. We're going to go to the next stitch that has not been worked with a single crochet chain one, double crochet for a waddle stitch, skip the next two stitches, and then the next stitch we're going to work the foundation for the large honeycomb, which consists of three front post double crochets, not trebles, but double crochets, they are different, a little bit smaller, and then worked into the top loops of the next stitch, we're going to work a half double crochet. We're going to repeat that two more times. So that would be three front post double crochets and then a half double crochet worked in through the top loops. And do that again. Three front post double crochets and then a half double crochet worked in again through the top loops. Let's pause a second so we have one, two, three sets with followed with this half double crochet. The fourth set, we're just going to work three front post double crochets. One, two, and three. So let's pause and take a look at what we have so far. I'll just cover this part so that you see the four, one, two, three, four groupings. And then, of course, the waddle stitch and the foundation here for the honeycomb. All right, after that, we're going to work another waddle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, worked in the same space. And then we're going to skip two more stitches, one, two, and then two more for the honeycomb, one, two, so a total of, again, four double crochets being skipped, and then we're going to work front post double crochets in the next, I'm sorry, front post trebles in the next two. Whenever you cross cables like we're doing now, we use front post treble crochets. Working behind those two stitches, we come into the hole here, and front post treble in the two closest stitches. So that would be, again, the third and a fourth stitch that were skipped. That's one. And then coming in to this opening again and locate the next stitch. And it's right there. Now for the second part of this, skip the next two stitches, front post treble in each of the next two stitches. And working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And let's pause again to make sure that these are crossed the way that we want them to, and that is correct. Now we're ready for some waddle stitches. We're going to work single crochet, chain one, double crochet in that next stitch skip two stitches and then the next stitch we work a single crochet chain one double crochet and for the end of the row we're going to skip the last two stitches and then in the chain three turning chain we're going to work a single crochet so let's go ahead and pause and take a look at at this right now so we have the waddle stitches 
foundation for the small honeycomb, a wattle stitch, and then you have the groupings of the front post double crochets. And notice again, I, I'm taking a lot of time just so that I'm clear about this, that it goes right from the wattle stitch into the front post double crochets. The half double crochets are here, here, and here. And they're going to be recessed a bit, and that kind of helps to add, um, you know, adds dimension to the cabling we're going to be working. Wattle stitch, another foundation for this small honeycomb, wattle stitch, wattle stitch, and a single crochet in that turning chain. So now we're ready to move on to row number three. Turn our work. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. And working only in the chain one spaces, which is right there, of these wattle stitches, we're going to, so I'll just explain in detail here, skip this stitch, the single crochet, and that double crochet. And then in that chain one space, we're going to work a wattle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we're going to do that again, skip the single crochet, the double crochet, and again, working only in that, that chain one space, work another wattle stitch. So going forward, I'm just going to mention just, you know, work your wattle stitches in the chain one spaces. Okay, so just that just implies that you'll be skipping those other stitches for that particular stitch. Okay, now working across um, with the back side facing us, we're going to work back post double crochets, which is doing the same that we did with the front post, except we're coming in the back door of the stitch. And then we complete the double crochet. Again, if this is brand new to you, check out the video description for some of those stitch videos and maybe do some swatches on that first. Again, this is an intermediate project, so um, I'm not trying to frustrate anybody out there, but again, slow down the camera or the playback speed should you need to do that. So what I'm doing now, I'm just working back post double crochets over each of those eight stitches of this honeycomb cable. Okay, let me go ahead and pause. All right, and then we get to the wattle stitch right here, and we're going to skip right over there and work another wattle stitch, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now as we come across the foundation for the large cable, we're going to work three back post double crochets. That's two and three. So you've worked three back post double crochets and then a half double in the half double crochet. So do that again and again as we go across three back post double crochets, half double in the half double. Again, three more back post double crochets half double in that half double. And then the last set, three back post double crochets, that's two and three. Now make sure you do not put a half double crochet at the end of this because it does not have one again at the beginning or at the end of this cable. And then we get to the wattle stitch and jump right over to that chain one space, work a single crochet, chain one, double crochet in that space. And now we're just going to work double crochets, or I'm sorry, back post double crochets across the next eight stitches of this honeycomb cable, or the small one at least. And do make sure there are four here and then four on the other side. And we should have two more one and two. All right, now we're the wattle stitches in the chain one spaces, just like that. And the next one. And 
And now in that single, I'm sorry, in the chain three space, we're going to work a single crochet just like this. Chain three and turn so that we can begin working row number uh, four. Okay, so that, I'm sorry, number, that's right, row number four. So we just finished three rows. So we've chained three, and we're going to go right to working those waddle, waddle stitches in that chain, those chain one spaces, single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and in the next one, Now this is going to be a little different from the way we crossed our cables. We're going to do it in the opposite way that we did two rows earlier. And hopefully it's easier to see now. We're going to skip the next two stitches, these post stitches. And in the next two, we're going to work front post treble crochets. And an easy way to remember whether you're to use a treble or a double with these front post and back post stitches is that it's only when you're crossing the cables that you use the treble crochets, the front post trebles that is. Now working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that we skipped. We're going to be forming kind of like a like a boxy, um, almost like a parallel, not a parallelogram, but um, it's a quadrilateral here. Skip the next two and front post treble in those next two. Okay, now working behind those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in this stitch and then this stitch. Again, using the nerve endings of those, um, you know, your, your fingers and thumbs there. And then the next one. I imagine some of you may feel like you're all thumbs trying this for the first time, but don't worry. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. These are only squares. And um, hopefully it'll be an enjoyable learning experience. Okay, we're working a waddle stitch in this next stitch. And again, we're just building the foundations as we go across with these stitches. We're going to work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. waddle stitch. I'm sorry, that is a half double crochet. I stand corrected in the next stitch. And again, front post, double crochets in each of the next three stitches. Half double in the next half double. Three more front post double crochets. and half double worked in the top loops and then the last three three front post double crochets now working a waddle stitch you should be catching on to this single crochet chain one double crochet worked in that chain one space and then now we're back to the honeycomb cable. Skip the next two post stitches. Front post treble in each of the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches. Front post treble in the two stitches that were skipped. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, front post, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working behind the last two stitches, we're going to front post, treble crochet in this stitch and then in this, this stitch, okay? Coming into the hole, first this stitch. If you poke your thumb up through the hole with it, it's easy to hang on to that stitch and know exactly where it's going and then come back into that hole again and then we're going to grab the next stitch right beside it. I can feel it right here with these two digits here. And another front post treble. You get to the end, we're going to work a waddle stitch in the, those chain one spaces. So that would be one and then two. And then we're going to work a single crochet 
in that turning chain. And let's do a quick look at what we have. So you can see the way the honeycomb forms. It's kind of a three-dimensional um, box. Now, it's a good time to do a visual check to make sure that you crossed these in the correct way. It's a very visual pattern, and I think once you get the hang of this, you'll understand what you're looking for. So just a quick visual check. That looks good. Now we're ready to move on to row number five. Chain three. And all of these are going to begin with the same, with the two waddle stitches worked each in those chain one spaces. And let me go ahead and just talk you through the next part of this because it is very redundant to what we have already done. We're going to work four back post double crochets across the next eight stitches. Okay, back post double crochets, yes, across the um, back side of the honeycomb. A waddle stitch here. As we work across the back side of the large honeycomb, it's going to be three back post double crochets, half double three back post, half double, three back post, half double, three back post, then a waddle stitch worked in that chain one space, and then eight back post double crochets across the small honeycomb, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet in that last chain three turning chain. So go ahead and work that across the row. This is what you should have after five rows. Now this is going to be the beginning of row six, which is where we are going to start working the large cable. And so what we're going to do, we're going to bring these, this column to the right on the surface. This one's going to go under. This one's going to come out this direction on the surface, and this one's going to be on the underside. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. For this honeycomb cable, we're going back to what we worked with this row these cables are going to cross again and going to be forming another V. And the waddle stitches are going to main, remain constant, will be for every row. You'll know what to do here. And again, this honeycomb is going to open up just like it did on row number two. Well, let's go ahead and get busy here. So to begin, row number six starts just like the other rows, the chain three and we're going to work those two waddle stitches, one in each of those chain one spaces. And I will show the, the crossing of these cables once again. And once we do really a honeycomb, this is just going to be repeating every other row. It will cross in, every other row will cross out. So you're going to see, you know, honeycomb on top of honeycomb. Um, as the square progresses, and that again is an easy thing to visually check to make sure that you cross them correctly. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches. We're coming into the hole here, and we're going to front post treble in this stitch and then in this stitch. Again, this is probably the more challenging aspect of this particular square. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in each of the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in those two stitches that we just skipped. Let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so it's going to go out and then in, out and in, all the way up the square. Get to that waddle stitch and just work in that chain one space, single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now we get to the large cable and this is what we're going to do. We're going to skip the next three post stitches, half double crochet, worked in those top loops, front post treble crochet, in each of the next three stitches. So now after working those three front post treble crochets, we're going to work behind the last four stitches, 
I've got my hook wrapped with that treble prep there and come into the hole and we're going to work a front post treble here then here and then here so let's go ahead and take the first stitch again popping your thumb up through that hole and holding on to that stitch really does help to locate it that's one we're going to come into the hole again and we're going to do the second stitch right here so that's two and the third one right there let's go ahead and get that one okay after crossing those two columns we're going to half double crochet in the top loop so the next half double and now we're going to skip the next three stitches half double and the next half double and just wanted to show you this looks kind of like a mess okay right now and we're about to fix it but if you get to this point and you see this and you're like good grief this looks awful well let's just keep it going and not worry about it front post treble in the next three stitches Now, working in front of those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three stitches that we skipped. And this again is the easier part. And it's going to feel like you're reaching across the room to get these other stitches, but that is okay. That is normal. Um, that's just the nature of it. And then let's go ahead and work the next waddle stitch in that chain one space. And then I want to take a break here and show you what we've just done. So this is what those large cables should look like. Okay, so it has crossed in the middle and see how this column is coming out on top this direction and this one should be going the opposite direction just like that. And then we're going to finish out row six with another honeycomb, skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches Working behind those last two stitches, we come behind into the hole and we front post treble in those two stitches that we skipped. So that was one, and here comes the other one. Okay. And again, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but that's part of teaching. I am using the feelers and you know the, the receptors in my Tomian and Thumbkin there to help me to do that technique. Okay, skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Waddle stitch worked in each of the next chain one spaces. That'd be one. And there is the second one. And a single crochet at the end. Let's pause and take a look at what we have. All right, now we're ready to go on to row seven. And I'm going to just talk you through part of this. We're going to work a chain three, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, eight back post double crochets across the small honeycomb and a waddle stitch. So go ahead and do that much and then I will meet you at the large cable. Now working across the back side with the back side facing of this large cable, we're going to work three back post double crochets. Now in between where the cables were crossed, we're going to work a half double crochet, which is in between the last stitch and the next stitch. So right there in that space, it's not a stitch specifically, but it is a space in between. And then we work three more back post double crochets. Again, that's right where those cables were crossed, or part of the cable at least. 
Okay, now we did add an additional stitch here, but we are going to skip this half double crochet and we're going to work in the next half double crochet, thereby maintaining our stitch count. Nothing is going to change in that regard. And then now three more back post double crochets. One, two, and three. Half double in between that last stitch and the next stitch. Again, this is right in the center where the cables were crossed. And then three more back post double crochets. Don't forget those last three on that back side there. Okay, after that, we're just going to work a waddle stitch. In that next waddle stitch, back post double crochets over the next eight stitches, and then waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet in that turning chain. So go ahead and complete that. Now before we begin row number eight, let me explain what's going to happen so that it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so we are going to complete the rest of these honeycombs just like we did a few rows below here. We're just going to cross them where they close up. And for the large honeycomb cable, it's actually quite easy. We're just going to be working three front post double crochets, half double in that half double it is in there, make sure you don't forget it, and then three front post doubles, half double, three front post doubles, half double, and three front post doubles, and the waddle stitches will be worked as they are on every row. So let me go ahead and start you off on row number eight, the chain three, one, two, three, and single crochet, chain one, double crochet, which makes up that waddle stitch, do it in those first two. And just to make sure that you understand these um, honeycombs, I'm going to go ahead and cross the cables again, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably just give more assignments as we go forward on doing this. Skip the next two stitches, front post, treble crochet in each of the next two stitches. Working in front, of the last two stitches, front post, treble crochet in those two stitches that were skipped. So always make sure that you're closing in the direction you want to go in. Skip two, front post, treble in the next two stitches. Working behind those last two stitches, we're going to come in the back hole and work those two front post treble crochets. Again, using those um, nerve endings of those, you know, fingers, thumbs, whatever. Waddle stitch in the next stitch. And then now this is the main part I wanted to show you front post double crochet in the next three stitches. This is the large honeycomb cable. Okay, after we do that, that, you can see the half double right here. Go ahead and work in the top loops. And then we should have three more front post double crochets that we're going to work, but just do know that once you cross like this, that they, they look like they're hiding, but they are there and you do not want to skip them. So that's three front post double crochets, half double in the top of the half double, and then we're going to work the other side. Three front post double crochets, half double in the half double, and then three more front post double crochets. One, two, and three waddle stitch and then when you cross this you're going to cross it just the way I did this one over here so that we close in in the top of the honeycomb and then we're going to work waddle stitch waddle stitch and a single crochet in the chain three turning chain so go ahead and finish row eight 
This is what you should have after eight complete rows. Now for row nine, I'm going to turn and I'm going to talk you through this one since it is very much like what we've already done on other rows. We're going to work waddle, chain three of course, then waddle stitch, waddle stitch, eight back posts, double crochets, waddle stitch, and then across the large cable, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, half double, three back post doubles, and then a waddle stitch, eight back post doubles, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and a single crochet in that chain three turning chain. So go ahead and complete row nine. Okay, this is what you should have after completing nine rows. Now I'm gonna give you a two row assignment. Row 10, we are gonna again, just continue with, with the waddle stitches like you've been doing. And as you work the honeycomb, you should know that the next crossed rows, which again, you're crossing these every time the front side is facing, it's going to go out, okay? And as you work over this section for row 10, we are just gonna work front post double crochets and then half doubles where you see half doubles front post, half doubles front post, half, uh, half double crochets, front post, double crochets. Waddle stitch, and again, you're gonna cross the cables with the um, honeycomb coming out, so you're going to work behind, and then you're gonna work in front on this side. And then waddle stitch, waddle stitch, single crochet in that chain three turning chain. And then after you work across that, we're gonna turn, and we're gonna work a row just like row nine where you work the waddle stitches, waddle stitches, eight back post doubles, waddle stitch, and then again, back post double crochets, um, half double, etc. across the large cable, waddle stitch, eight back post doubles, and then two waddle stitches and a single crochet in that turning chain. So go ahead and work rows 10 and 11, and then I'll show you what to do for row number 12. This is what you should have after completing rows 10 and 11. Okay, now we're ready for row 12. And before we do that, let me explain what we're going to do. We're going to work the small honeycomb by closing it in at the top again, just like we did here and here. And for this section, we are actually going to cross these cables again. We're going to cross this one with this coming up on the outside and this one going under, this one is gonna go under and this column or part of the cable is gonna come out on the top side. And the waddle stitches will be worked as usual. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is chain three, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and go ahead and cross these cables with them crossing at the top like here and work this waddle stitch and I will show you how to cross this large cable. Okay, after completing, up to the cable, and this again is row 12. We're gonna cross these cables, and let me go ahead and get ready to do that. We're going to skip the next three stitches, half double in that next half double crochet, and then we're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. Now working in front of the last four stitches, we're gonna front post treble in those three stitches that we skipped on that first column there. Okay, half double in the next half double. And now we're gonna skip the next three stitches, one, two, three and half double in the next half double. Front post treble in the next three stitches. One, two, three. And now working behind those last four stitches we just worked, we're gonna front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, and then this stitch. Coming in through the back window here, and there's the first stitch. And then coming in again, the second. And one last time, 
for that third stitch. And again, work a wattle stitch and then we'll complete the row by working the cable so that it closes up at the top. You know how to do that already. Waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and then a single crochet. But let's go ahead and look at this central cable. Do you see how that is the larger version of the smaller cable here? So this will look better as we add additional rows, but that closes the top of that large cable. So go ahead and complete row 12. This is what you should have at the end of 12 rows. Now we're going to turn for row 13 and let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. It's very much like row number 9 that we worked. We're going to work waddle stitches and then back post double crochets, eight of them, across the small honeycomb and then a waddle stitch. So go ahead and work that and then I will work the over this large cable with you. So now working across the large cable, again this is row 13, we're going to work three back post double crochets. I, I'm working this again because I I know how confusing this can be because this is the row after the cables were crossed. Okay, and then in between that last, after working those three back post double crochets, in between that last stitch and next stitch, this is the center of where the cable was crossed, work a half double crochet. And like I said before, the math all works out, so just trust me on this. And then three more back post double crochets. And, and then we get to that center half double crochet. We are skipping one there, but you can't really see it when you cross them in this direction. And then three more back post double crochets. Followed by that half double in between that last stitch and the next stitch. And then three more back post double crochets. And I'm going to go ahead and just work this waddle stitch for you to anchor this so that I can show you what we're going to do. And then eight back post double crochets, waddle stitch, waddle stitch, and that single crochet. But I just wanted to show you just how that helps to close in that top of our large honeycomb cable and it's starting to look like something. Now I have a small assignment to give you. I want you to repeat rows 4 through 13. Um, again, row 6 is where the cables cross, so it's two rows before that happens again. And I want you to complete through, again, a repeat of row 4 through 13. And I'm going to put a little time mark right across the bottom of the screen so that you can go back if you need stitch support. Now, I must be very clear about this. The stitch support, if you repeat this and go back, it's going to be a great help for the large honeycomb, but I must warn you that the small honeycomb is going to tell you to do it in the opposite way that you need to do that. It's a little complicated, and the reason that turned out that way is because the multiple of rows for this stitch are very different than this stitch. Um, but just know that you just need to do a visual check at the end to make sure that these are going out, then in, out, then in, out, then in every, you know, every two rows. So I hope that's not too confusing. Just be careful that you, that you follow the directions for this. This is the important part if you have to use the, um, the stitch information again by repeating rows four through 13. So again, um, I will have this written out in the directions very clearly so that you can go row by row and you won't be confused by this. But again, that's just if you are depending primarily on looking back at those rows again, just know that these are going to be different than what you need to do. All right, so go ahead and complete those rows, rows 4 through 13, one more time. Now I have another small assignment. This will be for rows 24 through 27. That's, that is four rows. And they are pretty much 
going to continue in the pattern stitch for the honeycomb where you have to you know make sure that you're doing it the correct way and with same with the wattle stitches now concerning the large honeycomb cable for these rows we're just going to be working um front post double crochets of course in the half doubles where the half doubles go or back post double crochets what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be elongating for the remainder of the four rows so again row 24 you'll be working front post double crochets over the large cable for row 25 you'll be working back post double crochets for row 26 front post double crochets and for row 27 back post double crochets so by now you should know how to do these so go ahead and complete those four rows and then i'll show you um, how to do the perimeter rounds that will follow let's go ahead and take a look at our square this is after completing 27 rows okay so notice that with the honeycomb you're going to have six and a half of those honeycombs and you're going to have two large honeycombs in the middle now it is time for us to begin our perimeter rounds so we did have the back side facing at the end of um, row two so let's go ahead and chain one and we're going to turn it's very important that you work these rows with the front side facing i think it just looks a lot better now before we even begin let's do something very important and i recommend that you do this on each side i'm going to just show you how to begin this and then i will continue around the square okay i am going to mark the center of the square and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide this side into fourths so what I'm going to do to do this is I'm just going to fold one end to the middle I showed this on the other two squares but just in case that this is the first square that you see of this particular design I just want to be clear to give instruction so I divided this into half and then I put the little stitch marker in the center and I'm going to go ahead and fold this one. Again, it doesn't have to be super exact, but you know, you want to be within a ballpark. So I'll go ahead and mark this one. So what I have done, put these in the front so that you can see them against this background. What I've effectually done is divided this side into fourths. And as we crochet around this, you would do the same. You can just fold this in half and and you know put one at the halfway point then fold the halves into half so that you get the quarters and so forth okay so what i am going to do is i'm going to crochet 40 single crochets from corner to corner and in order to get them even I've divided this into four, so I will make, instead of, you don't have to re recount and calculate over and over and rip back and forth. All I have to do is put 10 stitches evenly distributed to this point, and then 10 more to this point where the mark stitch marker is, and 10 more, and then 10 more. When I get to the corner, I'm going to crochet a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, turn 90 degrees, replace the stitch markers and then do it all over again all the way across or actually around the square so let me go ahead and just demonstrate a little bit of this for you we're going to chain one and there's no absolute rule as to where you put these stitches but i'm just going to work 10 stitches evenly across so that's two three it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's just go ahead and skip that stitch there, and then ten. So I have ten stitches evenly spaced. 
Now, as you work this across, um, for example, the, the edging, the bottom of the foundation row, you're going to have to skip stitches periodically. It will not line up stitch by stitch. So that, again, is why we're using the stitch markers. So I'm going to continue working this evenly, um, working 10 stitches in between these stitch markers, and then I will meet you at the corner. So after working across, I'm going to work that last, or the 40th stitch across in that turning chain. Then we're going to chain two, turn our piece 90 degrees, and then I'm going to work another single crochet in that corner just to show you that the last it's the same space as the where the last single crochet was. And then I'm going to just continue working all the way around the square with this edging round. And then when I get to the last stitch on this last side to be crocheted around, I'm going to crochet my last stitch in the same place where the first stitch was crocheted, chain two, and join with a slip stitch to the first two loops right here of that first single crochet that was worked and then I'm going to fasten off or cut the yarn. So after working that single crochet in that last place, chain two, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that very first single crochet that was worked of the round. I'm going to give it a tug, give it a chain and pull tightly and then I'm going to clip a generous strand so that it would be easy to hide with our yarn needle. And I do recommend if you can either hide this now or you can crochet over it either way works. Now we're going to take the color that we have chosen to go around all of our squares. This is also the color that we're going to be working the final trim and it's going to be going to be nice and lovely, but make sure that you pick a color that goes well with the other colors that you have chosen. So I'm going to join in a different place from where we just um, fastened off. And I'm going to again work a slip knot. And I'm going to go ahead and make a corner in this corner. And the way I'm going to do this is give it a chain. And now I'm going to work a single crochet. I'm going to work it over that chain. Chain two. I'm going to turn 90 degrees and work another single crochet in that same corner so that you maintain um, the corners for these sections. And then I'm just going to work a single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. Once I get to the chain two, I'm going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that chain two corner. And just wanted to make a mention that because we are doing the single crochet, chain two, single crochets in the corner, that we're adding two single crochets to each side of the square. So instead of 40 stitches along each side, after this final round, we're gonna have 42. So just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that and yes, it is kind of important that you have the right number of stitches across each side, especially as we begin um, connecting them. So go ahead and finish working that all the way around and I'll show you what I have. After completing that last round, this is what I have. And so I have one square completed. So now I need to complete three more so that I have a total of four squares in this or in the particular color that you chose for this particular square number. And once we do that, if you need to catch up at all and go back to the previous squares, by all means do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed making that square. Don't forget to make the extras that you need for the size blanket that you'd like to make. And if you're following along with what I'm doing, you're going to need four of those particular squares. And again, if you don't have all one color for those, you can always use yarn from your stash. Well, I'll see you next week when we bring out square number four. God bless. Bye-bye.